Oh, there we are, there we are. I'm 10 seconds late. Sorry about that. 15 seconds late. I don't know. <laughs> Another nice, nice day in the Saxa. No complaint at all about the weather these days. Don't quite have enough time to enjoy it, but it's okay. No complaint about the weather. It's perfect weather. If this is the time of year, if I could stop the clock, I would just stop it right here. Absolutely. Good morning, good morning. One without mask, one with mask. Oops. Oh, two kegger. It's a two kegger. Yeah, the weekend was uh, was jumping. It was jumping. We're starting to come towards the end of the year season, you know. A saxa is just every bar and every restaurant is full every day. You know, it used to be, you know, the weekends, whatever, it's always crowded. I get it. Saturday night, it's just impossible. Tried to find dinner here Saturday night. Forget it. There's two ways to do this. One is to go to the convenience store, or second is to get out of the district. And on Saturday night we did. We went across the river into Sumida Ku. Just get across the river and it changes dramatically, or get a kilometer away from the district. Other than that, you just can't get a meal here. Impossible without lining up. That's the weekends, but now it's getting like that almost every day of the week. Asakusa is the become one of the entertainment districts for the country or for the for the for the city. You know. Okay, okay. What's up today? There's a mixed bag today. There's six different jobs on my desk. We've been doing the tracing, but I think I have to take a break from that this morning. I mean, I'll be back to it, but take a break from it from streaming. I've got to catch up. I forgot. And we're doing. Uh, the KJ series, Kyoto Journey series, and the December print is a snow scene. And Taran-san did all the color separation for me a week ago. And we sent, first we sent one block to Kawasaki-san to get her going, while Taran-san did the work on the color separations. And then I got, uh, he gave them to me. I pasted a bunch of them down, sent them off. But I didn't have time that day to do them all. So I didn't get them all done. There was a couple left. And I forgot about them. But <laughs> she's is this all there is? So today I've got to get back on this. And I've got to pick up the... the I think there's four left that I didn't send her. They're on the desk here. So I've got to paste down. So I've got two, two more to paste down before she runs out and finishes the one that she's already done. You know, once I checked out, Terrence was doing it, so I checked out and that's it. Not my responsibility, but it was. I'm the guy who pastes them down and sends them out. So I've got to do that this morning. I'm not sure how long it'll take. Those of you who've seen the stream know how this works. I've got two of these color separations on Gumpy paper to paste down. And I'm not sure, I think Talansan used the three millimeter paper. And if he did, then there's gonna be no peel. I think it's three, we can't tell. So there may or may not be a peel. Just stand by for that. I've gotta check these over, the last check up, check up and, then, uh, and then paste them down. And we have show and tell. We've got some show and tell stuff that's been building up. I've been getting bits and pieces of odds and ends here for a while. And I think I was going to open this one the other stream, but we got sidetracked because uh, Afghanistan dropped by. But since then, something else has come in. Another package has arrived from Germany. And this is to die for. It's socks. Get your garter socks or take them off to start with them, whatever you like. Get your socks off. 9.15 show and tell time. It's actually a, a Japanese shipping label. Germany, whatever, we'll see. How's your German language? As in reading ability. Let's get going. I need a piece of wood to paste down. Oh, Koringami, that's right. He's living uh, nearby, not in Germany, but nearby. Actually. I think I got the wrong one here. Let me have a look at this. Which one do I get here?
know it's memos. Okay. Yeah, I need people with German reading skill for the show and tell today. We'll see. Anyway, let's put that aside. Coffee cups. Coffee cups, coffee cups out of the way. Let's clear the decks. Okay, we have two of the color separation sheets. We have a piece of wood with two faces. And I've got Taran San's check sheet here. So we're going to take the time here <clears throat> because I didn't do this myself, I would like to go over this a little bit before I actually paste it down to see if there's anything missing. And like I can tell, I really can't tell at this point. Because I didn't do this full separation, I really myself don't know, should this area be dark, should it be left in, should it be off, I really, really don't know. What Taransan has done is he's colored it in here, and he's prepared a sheet for her to compare, so she can put this on her bench at the side while she's carving. Because he's done it a little bit different than I do, he's followed Asuka Sensei's instructions, and in the old days, when they were just using thin paper. They didn't use Gampi for the most part. It was common to use a thin Hodomura or some kind of strong paper that was sized very strongly so that it wouldn't swell or shrink and it was really thin. <coughs> but as with any such paper, Japanese paper, as soon as you make it moist, it starts to expand and contract. And in the old days, they were using actual uh, pigment for this. It was common to use a red a vermilion pigment in a brush and the, the person doing the transfers would take their brush, dip it in the pigment, and paint the areas necessary. But because the pigment was water-based, when it hit the thin paper, you would tend to get a lot of waviness and expansion and contraction. And you don't want that in a color transfer sheet. So it became the common practice to do what you see Taran San, what he's done here. This area, for example, you can see that there's a tree here and a tree here. They're not going to be on this block. This block must be for the background area behind the trees. We can see it everywhere. So we want to leave this area uncarved and take away the rest. So Taransan has carefully outlined it first with his marker. And then instead of coloring in the whole thing, he's just put stripes in here to indicate that whole zone. And the reason is, as I said, as I mentioned, when you're doing this with a water-based pigment on thin paper, if you start coloring in this white spot and coloring in that one and coloring in that one, it's too much water on the paper. The thing starts to swell and, uh, and get wavy, and you're dead when it comes time to pasting it down. Now, with this print, actually, it wouldn't matter for a couple of reasons. One, he's not using a water-based pigment. He's using a modern marker, which doesn't leave moisture in the paper. Two, the whole thing here is really very small. There is not much chance of it expanding and contracting very much. And three, we have it pasted to a backing sheet. This paper really isn't free to expand and contract. So the, the downside then of having him do this is when you get to an area, let me try and find it here. So you get to an area like this. Let's try and put this in. We want this temple roof to be included. We want that branch to be not included. We want uh, this white to be not included. But down here now, he's colored it in. We see lots of white spots. And for Kawasaki's on the carver, when you see a white spot like this, she's going to tend to maybe chop it away or keep it away, keep it out. So it's confusing when you've got parts that are partly colored in, parts that are fully colored in. Is that white? Look at this right here. Let me point at it really, really carefully. This white is to be left on the block. This white is to be carved off the block. This white gets carved off. This, see what I mean? So I think this is not such a great idea. Taransan himself is a carver, so he knows how this works. And because he did the color separations on this, he really knows how it works. He wouldn't leave that in. But Kawasaki-san is coming to this straight. 
She hasn't seen all the work that went into this before. Here's another one. Look at that. This is really, really, really easy to make a mistake. Even I'm confused by this right now. That white area here, is that to be left out or is that in? How about this one? I think they're in because Taran San has done the outline here. But for Kawasaki san, it's really, really, really difficult to understand at this point. So I'll chat with Taran san about this. And when you're doing the color separations yourself, it's okay to do this. But when you're passing on to another person, that person is like, what? Here's another one. Look at this, look at this, look at this. That white area here, which looks like an outlined area, needs to be kept. This white area has to be taken away. Same thing here. That area doesn't appear on the block. This area does. Tronson, if you're watching, Even me coloring this in, it's really, really, really difficult to understand at this point. What's in and what's out here? Have I made a mistake? That little one's supposed to be out? How about this? Look at this. That end of that piece of wood definitely is white. What about that piece of wood? No, he hasn't traced around it. So I think it's in. Look at this, right side by side. White in and white out. Taransa, no, 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 please. He did the separation, so he knows, he's familiar with this thing. He studied it for days and days and days and days on end. She's just coming to it straight, paste it down, cut. Another one here. We have white areas that I think are to be left out. This is snow. What about this one? What do we do here? I haven't any idea what she would do here. Is that in or out? It's got red tipped into it. Sorry to know the chat here. It's mitigated to some extent, you know, Taran-san has prepared these also. These will go to the carver. So she's got this sheet at the side. So she'll keep this on her bench as she's carving, and this is her reference. If she's not sure about something, as her knife is about to go into the wood, she can look back to this reference and double check it. That's fine. But if she, you know, if her knife, you know, cuts the wrong place, if she's still not sure at the moment she's actually looking at the wood and carving. So no way, no way. Okay, let's do this. I think we're good now. Let's paste them down. Let's pull out a bit. 
So Taran-san, he's saying you stand by it. That's fine, Taran-san. But if you're the one that's going to be correcting the mistakes or not, they'll come back. <laughs> the way that is there, because you've done this color separation. You've spent days with this picture. She hasn't even seen it yet. I mean, you know what I mean. She hasn't seen it and studied it. We've got a hard spot on the wood. We've got to make sure it doesn't fall in any place important here. Hmm, bingo. That hard spot will fall right here. This is cherry, yes, this is all cherry wood. For, for most of our work, normal work, we always use just Japanese mountain cherry. You've seen in the recent you know, carving videos more and more boxwood because recently we've been doing some very delicate work, our Hokusai series. But normally, hontori for most, most of our work, it's just cherry wood. It works just fine. It's a very good balance between hardness and absorbability. Moisture absorbs into it well, but it's hard enough to, uh, to stand up to the work. So as we said, there's no peel today. I think Taran-san used a three millimeter gumpy. And anyway, Kawasaki-san, she has really, she has asked me, please not to do that. She prefers to pull it off herself. If we do this peel and expose all the gumpy, then when she's carving part of it over here, her hand is rubbing and it tends to abrade the, the paper in other areas. So we should pull back on this, this meme, this peel that has become a meme thing, you know. Dave likes to do that just for fun, but it's not a good, sensible way to do this. So we'll just paste it down and pull off our backing sheet. You can put away your scorecards. My own carving, I'll keep doing it because I'm, I am what I am. But for a block that I'm going to be sending to somebody else, no. Let's stick to the, the common sense rules here. And it doesn't need it. Now you can see clearly. This is, I think it's the three millimeter, three mommy, three millimeter. What am I saying? Three mommy gumpy. I'm also too, I'm not in love with that orange too, because it's too similar to wood color. 
contrast. I would prefer a higher contrast. Then on the back side, let's do the other one. No real defects in the wood here. I think we can just go straight on. Paper is out. Yes, uh, I got it this morning. The paper is out for uh, Dei Chan. She's upstairs. She's printing Hokusai. The November Hokusai print is under in printing production at the moment. And Dei Chan's doing the first batch of them. She's got her paper. She did her own sizing for it uh, a while ago, last week. And then she pressed the paper. The paper all got sized by Dei Chan, then pressed by Dei Chan. Now she's doing the printing. Some says they're looking for good books about Shin Hanga. If you're talking about technical stuff, how to build prints and how to layer color and stuff, there really is no good manual for that other than Yoshida's old book from the 1930s, the Yoshida, what's it called? Japanese woodblock printmaking, I guess, by Yoshida. We've got the full text of it because it's in public domain. The full text of it is on my, uh, my quote unquote encyclopedia. If you go to woodblock.com, the library section, you'll find Hiroshi Yoshida's book there. And he probably doesn't even use the word Shin Hanga, I think, because that was a word sort of patented or copyrighted by Watanabe. That was Watanabe-san's world. So I don't think Yoshida uses the word Shin Hanga. I could be wrong on that. You can, you can double check me by doing a, a search in the PDF book. How did Afke-san's, triple-A, Afke-san's, afke -san sizing? It's good. She made her print yesterday. In fact, she'll be reporting, I guess, or, or she'll be giving me some pictures. Yesterday, Afke-san spent the whole day here, morning to night, doing a complete edition of that small postcard-sized print that she mentioned. She sized the paper, and she got all the printing done yesterday. S start to finish. I think it was eight, nine impressions. She's a worker. She's a hard worker. wood grain you know it's not really a prime piece of wood for sure but it should do for this I know what I forgot to do this morning before starting this. I should have charged my pencil. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We might find in a minute when we switch to the next work that the pencil doesn't have a charge. Let's see. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. But let me do that now. Hang on a sec. This might be a disaster.
Okay, and again, no peel. We don't really need one. She will peel with her finger whatever she feels is necessary. She will handle it at the time of carving. I forget how many blocks altogether. I sent three already, four. I can't even remember. It's all mixed up now. I think it's going to be five pieces of wood, both sides. Do you remember Talon Sun? It's, it's one key block, is it? And then five pieces of wood, both sides. I don't remember. It's a lot, and it's more than what we would normally plan for this series, but uh, things are what they are. Once color separation work starts, you, you always need one more and one more and one more. So the charge happens really quickly, so if I do it right now for just a minute or so, it should give me enough, yes. But still, it's not a good thing. Okay, that piece of wood and these two sheets of paper will be sent to her after the stream is over here. Let's get them out of the way. Ah, good, good, good. Okay, next. We return to our regularly scheduled programming. I don't want to do this. I want to go to show and tell. <laughs> it can't be helped. <laughs> I want to go to show and tell. Taransan joined a few together. I think it's four blocks now. Oh, did you reduce it, Taransan? So it's, there's two key blocks actually. So two key blocks. The back sides are still blank. What have I sent already? One, two, three. So there's one more. Is there to go? I don't remember. Someone's asking, what's the latest with the swim? It's, it's escalating. It escalated today. Nanda. Oh, little jumping spider. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on back. Come, come back, come back, come back, come back. Say hello to your friends. Can you see it? Little jumping sp We've got these all over the building. I know we've got two kinds of staff here. Staff members that like these little spiders and staff members that are terrified of them. They're little tiny jumping spiders and I think they eat aphids and stuff. Oops, he's gone. If you, if you know what you're doing, guy, get out of here. There's two kinds of staff members. People who leave them alone, you know, oh, that's nice, that's cute. And then people are like, oh my God, kill it. I think they are fun. They're in no way hurting human beings in any way whatsoever. <laughs> I don't even know if they have a mouth. One, four, one, eight, two, F, second floor. That's from when this iPad used to live up on the second floor. I don't know, I can't, he might have jumped somewhere dangerous. I can't really uh, control that anymore. He may get sat on or he may be safe. I don't know. They are so cool, spiders. Just, they are so cool. It's too bad we didn't have them all. You can't see them. If I have the microscope here, you know, just those, those little things on their heads, these jumpers, they're just so cool. Do we have a charge? I'm at 64%, which is enough. When I'm 64. <sighs> the pool. The pool is getting nasty. I'm sorry to report. It's not... <sighs> Whatever. It's that young lady. I don't know. She has tried in lane one, in lane three, in lane four. The last week or so, she's been in lane four with the guy who really swims fast. And uh, he's been really frustrated because he's been doing, he does a timer thing. He swims first four lanes to get warmed up. Then he sits back, gets his goggles adjusted, gets his watch or whatever it is, looks up at the clock, gets it all synchronized, hits something, and then away he goes. And because she's in the same lane as him now, and she's slower, and she doesn't get out of the way for faster people. This is the root of this problem. When she's in a lane with slower people, she slaps them on the foot to say, get out of my way. But when she's in a lane with a faster person, she doesn't get out of the way. And I'm sorry to, to report this. You know, We got a bit of static last week from the people saying, is this bullying? The regular members are bullying the new member. And I've got to say, no, that's not what's happened at all. This young lady has aggressively come in 
and tried to cut her own path through what was a very stable situation, which, which was flexible. And it's not going well. And what's happened now because of this is everybody wants to get in there as soon as possible to get their spot. And now nobody is taking a shower. What you're supposed to do is you get to the change room, you get your clothes off, you put your swimsuit on, you go down the hallway, and at the entrance to the pool there's a shower room. And you're supposed to shower off, like I guess in case you're sweaty from the summer or whatever, you know, shower off before you jump in the pool. And nobody's doing that because they want to get bang, 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 grab their spot, grab their lane before this girl comes in. And this girl now is in the early team. She doesn't change into her swimsuit. All the women now, in this first early group, all the women are wearing their swimsuits under. The bell rings at 7 o'clock. The guys go on our side. The girls go on their side. I get changed, take my clothes off, put my shorts on, as do a couple of the other guys. We get out into the hallway that goes down to the pool. It's now 7.02. The women are already in the water jostling for who's going to be in which lane. They've got their swimsuits on. They go straight there, screw the shower right into the pool. It's not pleasant to watch. So. <laughs> and I don't know how it's going to work out. So far, the guys, we're sort of playing this by the rule. And today it was lucky because the lane five, which is normally old ladies fooling around, breaststroking back and forth, there was nobody there this morning. Well, at that, that time, of course, because these guys are running, 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 of course there's nobody there. So this fast girl went in lane five, leaving Mr. Fast Man lane four, me alone today in lane three, because my, quote, partner lady is sometimes not there on Mondays. So today was okay. But it's ugly. It's not nice. It's ugly. And I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know what's going to happen. But please, please give me a break on this. It wasn't bullying. We really, really, you know, just tried to do the normal thing. I don't know, in the girls' locker room, the women's locker room, did they talk to her? Does she, or did she just, you know, in her own little halo? I don't know. I don't know. So you're talking about this chicken is here, chicken meister. Should the staff get involved? There's a staff member always in the pool, of course. It's sort of quasi lifeguard, quasi looking over what's going on. Whether he or, you know, it's in rotation, it's always different people. Whether they can see what's happening here, I don't think so. I'm sure the staff member is not seeing, gee, that girl seems to be passing everybody. You know, I don't think so. I think it's a lifeguard situation, you know. The only way through this to me is if uh, in the ladies' locker room, if somebody, you know, maybe an older lady who is not one of the, who is not in direct competition with this woman, could maybe, maybe say something to her. I don't know. Guys, we can't do anything about this at all. There's no verbal communication in the pool. So I'm sorry to report that at the moment there's stress. For me, not so much. It doesn't bother me. She hasn't come into my lane for a while now, but if she does come into my lane, no problem. When I get the foot tap, I will just simply get out of the way. Or if I see her coming, I'll get out of the way. I don't care. I'm not timing my swim. It won't, it won't spoil my, my timing record or something. The guy in lane four, he's got this all, you know, he's timing everything he's doing. So we'll see. It's trouble in paradise. Other than that, I am so much enjoying that pool. It's been nearly two years. I started just after my birthday. The weight, now I still do check my weight every day, but it's just a formality. 62 62.8, 63.1, 62.9, 63.0, 62.7, 63.0. It's just right there, day after day after day. My, my weight chart has, what's the word, flatlined. <laughs> well, a year ago it flatlined.
And the second elevator is coming back into service uh, next week. Did we talk about that? I probably didn't talk about this. The fitness center is up on the seventh floor of a, of a department store type building, a shopping mall slash department store. The department store doesn't open until 10 or 10.30, but the fitness center upstairs on the eighth and ninth floor is open to seven o'clock in the morning. So there's a one special elevator. We can't go into the department store and use those elevators. There's a special elevator for it, and it's a pair of elevators. They go from the parking in the basement up to the top, and one of them has been under maintenance since the spring. So you've had the, it's only been one elevator, and everybody wants to use this at the same time, of course, coming up to seven o'clock. A bunch of people all want to use these, get these elevators at the same time. Some people from the parking, some people from the main entrance. And it's been, uh, the elevator waiting times have been long, and there's been some little mini dramas there too, you know. Elevator culture in Japan is a little bit different than elevator culture that, that I know. There's one aspect to the elevator culture here that I find extremely frustrating. It's normal for Japan, but for me, it's uh, abnormal. If you're in a situation, okay, there's, a, there's an elevator or a bank of elevators, and in front of the elevator is sort of a lobby area, and there's the outside door to the building that you can see. There's, there's the setup. Okay, you're waiting for your elevator or something. You've come into the building, you're in the lobby, and you're waiting for the elevator. The door's open, nobody's inside, you get in, and you do your thing, you turn around and you press the button. Now as you're turning around to press the button, you can of course see out where you just came from. And then after a moment, the elevator doors start to close. Or in some case they don't, and you've got to, you know, you jam the button to close them. Now in my culture, at that point, when you see, as you turn around, and you see somebody else coming into the building and start to walk to the elevators, what do you do? In my culture, what do you do? A stranger, someone you've never met before, but they are following the same path you did a minute ago. They come through the door, they walk into the elevator. You hit the button that says hold the doors, or you, you put your hand in there. Japanese people don't do that. Even with somebody you know, the people I've in, in the swimming center, they go in the elevator, they turn around, and they stand there and watch the doors close while you are still coming towards the elevator. It's insane. I was shocked when it first happened to me. And I realized, now this happens all the time. This is the way, this is the way, this is the way. You just let it close. If they're within one or two meters, right there, speaking distance, and it's somebody you know from the pool, at that point you put your hand in. But if just it's the door opening, and in my swimming center, how this, how it's about from here to the back of that door, one, two, three, four, five, about eight meters, so ten yards or so. The door is outside open and somebody comes in and they just let the elevator door close. And where I get in trouble is, I've gone into the lobby, there's me and there's somebody else waiting, you know, good morning, or, or without saying, just you, you nod your eyes at, or whatever. The door opens, we go in. Whoever steps in first has to be the door opening person. So if I, if I have nodded, the other person goes in first, they do the switch and they select floor eight, I come in and I'm now the passenger. We both turn around, somebody else is coming, the doors close. And I'm like, ah, too late, the doors have closed. So what I've learned now is when there's two or three of us standing in the lobby, I push forward a bit and I make sure I'm the first guy going into the elevator. So I turn around, select eight, and I've now got my fingers on the switch. And these other two people come in, and if I see somebody else coming in, I'm the captain of the elevator. So I've got my hand on that switch gesture, wait for the person to come in, and up we go. It's really, I never, never knew this. I've been here, you know, 40 years, and you know about Japanese culture, you learn this and you learn that and you learn this, but it's only when you get in a repetitive situation like this each day, and this is something about Japan that I really hadn't known. Maybe it's totally local right here to me in Tokyo in this building. I don't think so. They just, they don't want to get involved. They don't want to get involved. Somebody else's problem is somebody else's problem. Once you, I do get this, you know, because once you've established, you've held the door for them and they're coming in and now there's a problem. What do you do? Do you talk? You know, there's now a, there's a social situation has now been created. And this, 
and I Finnish people will get what I'm talking about here. You know, now we have a problem. What do we do? Do we talk? Do we look off into the distance? Because we've established an obligation. You help the other person and now they have an obligation to do something back. So I get the root of what this is happening. Uh, the base rule here is do not incur obligations. Either way, don't let somebody help you and don't help somebody else because it just leads to difficulty. I think that's the, the explanation for this. Someone like me, we're not going to overthink this. Holding the elevator door, is, it's just, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. You're holding open the elevator door. There's no obligation. They don't have to pay you back the next day. But in Japan, obligations are very, very much a thing. Drama at the pool. How much drama can you stand? If you don't like this, then don't even think about living in Japan. <laughs> <coughs> yes, somebody's also got the other key. Yes, and this happens sometimes too. At the moment I do that, the person has come in the front door, I open the elevator door, and now that person, seeing me do this, now has an obligation. And they can't just stroll towards the elevator. And so it's a little old lady sometimes, and she's got to turn on the gas. And, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, yo, you kuri, you kuri. And now we have a difficult social situation. <laughs> welcome to Japan. Anthony, welcome to Japan. So, come on, Granny, get going, get in with her all. We're all in a hurry to get up to our pool. <laughs> so, it never, never, never ends. <coughs> Excuse me. It's so much fun being here, you know. It's so much fun being here as a foreigner. It's fun, as long as you're willing to think it's fun. Maybe if you're working in a Japanese company and that person hurrying towards the elevator is a person not the next, next desk or it's the manager. You know, you've got all the human interactions going on in the background, plus what's now happening in the lobby. It can get really sticky. Of course, this stuff all adds up, stacks up. So I'm sort of greatly simplifying this. We have our little mini world here of people going to a fitness center. But, you know, an hour later, we're all gone. We're spread out around town. You know, we don't work together. We don't live together. It's just some people bumping into each other for an hour, you know. I guess you could make a sitcom about it. I don't know. What would you call it? A, a standard classic 1960s era sitcom. Bunch of people going to a fitness center each morning. What would you call it? Let's see who's got the most creativity here or the, or the most silly idea here. What would you call that sitcom? Welcome to the Twitch stream, Japanese printmaking. Different strokes. <laughs> Different strokes. I think you get the first jag. I think. Dead weight out of my depth. How I met your mother. <laughs> Seinfeld. I guess you have to be American, I guess. <laughs> I 
it's not all about water. Remember, the pool, the, I, I go to the pool, but it's a fitness center. Most of the people that I meet in the elevator, most of the people coming are heading upstairs. The eighth floor is the pool and the changing rooms, and most of the visitors, uh, the, 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 the users, head for the stairs and up they go to the ninth floor, which overlooks the pool, so it's only half as large, but it's the, whatever, you, you know, the, 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 the machines and treadmills and trainings and this little track that runs around. It's a funny thing. There's a track, a little oval track up there that's built. You know the thing in the Grand Canyon? There's one of these viewpoints where you, you walk out this U thing that looks over the Grand Canyon. And you can, you know, you can jump over and kill yourself or something. We have one in our fitness center. And up in the ninth floor, I've never been up there, but you can see through the windows. There's people doing jump, 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 jump. And there's a track that comes out over the pool. So they're looking down on their little miniature Grand Canyon, which is looking over the pool here, <laughs> upstairs, downstairs. <laughs> okay, murder she wrote. <laughs> Parking and recreation. <laughs> I can't see with the water in my eyes. It would be cancelled at the end of the first season for sure. You know, I don't know if there's enough material to. Uh, you know. Well, it would depend on the characters, and also too, if you're making a sitcom about a fitness center, you know, most of the action or a lot of the action is going to take take place in the changing rooms, and of course that means your characters can't mix together. Only your male characters can interact with males. You know, so what do you do? You know, the female male interaction happens out in the in the exercise room. But the other, most of it happens in the back, in the bath, you know. There was another one. Oh my God, I, I got to keep working here. There was a funny one. The, the cleaning people are mostly Vietnamese. There's Vietnamese boys. There's a crew of three, four, five of them, whatever. They keep changing a little bit. And visas and something must have come to a change because being on October 1st, the regular guys that we see, the Vietnamese boys, don't know their names, but they chat with themselves. We're friendly. It's Ai Sat Su. They disappeared and a new team came in. So there must have been a visa thing and a visa changeover. So from October 1st, our regular, the guys, the cleaning guys, they switched out and two new ones came in. And because of that, I haven't had a bath in three weeks. I've had a shower, I, you know, I just washed my hair this morning, but the point is there's a bath, a bathtub in the change room and it's officially not open until like 8 o'clock. That's too late for me actually because i got to be here at work by 8 o'clock. And the cleaning routine is the team gets in there, they scrub the floors, they wash all the shower stations and when that's done they hit the saunas and when that's done they open up the bath and 8 o'clock the cleaning team leaves and they've done their cleaning between 7 and 8 each morning in that room. And the previous cleaning team, the Vietnamese guys, we had nudged them. Look, those of us who have to be out of there by 7.30 or 7.40, it's not just me. Other people had to work at 8 o'clock as well. We can't get a bath. So it became somehow along the past couple of years, the previous couple of boys had been nudged to change things around. They start by washing the shower stations because we need those early. But before they do the sauna, they pull the bath open so we could use it. And then they start their work on the sauna. So we had those two boys, two or three boys, trained. So I could actually get a bath. No time for it on Monday and Thursday because there's a stream. But Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, I do my swim, get a shower, wash my hair, and I'm in the tub. But with the change of staff at October 1st, it hasn't happened. The boys don't speak Japanese. I don't speak Vietnamese. 
and we're all looking at each other. Me and a couple of the guys were chatting. And what do we do? You know, these guys don't get it. They haven't got, you know, if only one of the previous boys had stayed, there would be a cultural, uh, what's the word? You know, the cultural thing would have been continuing to the next generation. But they all changed out at the same time. So whatever, what should I do? I should look up a dictionary and say, you know, how do I say politely, friendly in Vietnamese? You know, maybe you guys could do the bath before the sauna or something, or, or do I do it by gestures? Do I stand there in front of the bath with my towel? We don't really know what to do. And nobody wants to make waves, including me. We don't want to make trouble. The rules are the rules, but we would like to, you know, use the bath. And it's just a question of which one you do first. The bath is ready. It's hot. It's all ready to go. It's just as their last gesture, they pull the cover off, fold it up, bang, the room is now ready. And I don't know how to solve this problem. Learn a couple of Vietnamese words, give them 10 bucks. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not a major world problem, it's just, you know. And at some point, maybe one of us, it, it could be me, I guess, I'm the, because I'm a foreigner, I'm the sort of, I'm the point man for this sort of stuff. And the boys probably speak some English. They're Vietnamese, you know, 20s, 30s, college age kids. They probably speak some English, you know. So I should try it, you know. Just chat with them nicely. You know? So I think it's, it's, on, it's on me, this one. You know, the problem, of course, here is it's a little bit dangerous in that you're asking them to sort of, you know, break the rules and stuff. And if I do ask them to do this, they would probably look at each other and think, well, we want to do what this guy says, but our boss told us to do this, 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 you know. And I don't want to sort of stir things up and get them in trouble with their boss. I don't know. I don't know how the previous one came came about. So, so again, you've got to be a bit careful. Last thing I want to do is get these guys in, in trouble, you know. And I'm clean, I got my shower, it's okay, you know. How's your time? Show and tell time? No, not yet. 8.53. Seven minutes till I am time. So... <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Someone's brought up an interesting point. What happened on October 1st was the previous boys got fired for <laughs> opening the bath too early. So <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> Someone says here, line up, queue up next to the bath and stand there waiting. You know, yep, they would maybe get the idea. Yeah, there's lots of ways to do this. <laughs> We can't use the bath. It's covered up with a big plastic sheet and there's no way. No way. I could not. No way. Even I'm a foreigner. You cannot open the sheet by yourself. For one thing, it needs two guys to do this. This was part of the problem before. It doesn't need one attendant. It has to be two attendants, the guy fixing the, that stall, the guy fixing this. When they're both finished, they come together and they pull this. It's a big bath, you know. It's three meters by four meters. It's a big, big, big bath. I mean, and when it's misty, you can barely see the other side when the steam is coming off it. Oh, it's a two-man job. You pull this huge plastic sheet off, try and fold it up without getting it full of water. No, 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 no. Lie on the sheet. Yeah, right. What I could do is I could go to the front desk on the way out one day. There's a really unfriendly lady there, a cool lady, and there's a guy there who's kind of hip and friendly. So when it's his day, I could go down there and say, you know, we got the situation. Would it be possible to get the bath open just a bit earlier? You can see there's me and a few of the other guys. We have to go to work at 8 o'clock. Could you maybe ask the team downstairs to, uh, to switch it out? I could always do that, you know, just ask at the front desk. You could try. I don't remember what happened last time I talked to the management. I don't remember. Things just start to escalate, you know. Japan, Japan, Japan. It's a funny country. It's never-ending fun. As long as you think it's fun. There are people who find it never-ending microaggressions because you think these are microaggressions. 
if you're a person that's just enjoying life, Japan is never-ending fun. Well, I guess. I mean, maybe if you're working for a big company or something, it's a different story. But what can I say? It can be never-ending fun. Oops, too thick. I think we're getting some decent lines here. Does this, <coughs> does this look an, like, like an extendable neck? I think so. I think we're close enough here. Someone's asking, do the women get a separate tub? I have, I've never been in the women's change room, of course. I never will be. I know nothing about this, the women's change room. I guess, actually, I could do. There's a map. When you go to the front desk, there's a, the fire safety corner, whatever. So for the firemen, whatever, when they come running in, there's a, a grid map of the eighth floor and ninth floor. So I could look at the map and see the size of the bath. My guess is the women's bath, ladies' bath, will be smaller. My guess, the the attendance is clearly male. Uh, males are uh, there's more males than females here. So my guess is the female bath will be a bit smaller, but I don't know. Based on my previous talks, I'm a subject at their team meetings. I don't think so. I think I fit in very well. I don't make trouble here at all. Oh, someone's got. Okay, you've got the Vietnamese link here, but I haven't any idea how to pronounce this. <laughs> yeah, maybe Google will help me. Okay, if I cut and paste this to a chat GPT or Google, they will help me pronounce this. Okay, Ink, Ink Wing Art. Yeah, are you Vietnamese? Thank you very much for posting this in. I'm not sure if I can try it. I'll practice, I'll practice. As long as it's not something that's marginally dangerous, that I'll get in trouble if I screw it up, you know. Show it in writing. I'm in the bath. I can't show it in writing. At this point, I've left my clothes in my locker and then I've gone into the pool for a swim. I come out of the pool. I don't get back to my locker. I've taken my towel with me and I'm now in the, sw in the, in the shower room. I could wrap it in my towel, I guess. That's the route. Okay, I could do that. I could make a note, take it out of my locker, wrap it in the towel, go to the pool, have my swim, go to the locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laminated copy, add it to my tattoos. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay, this is interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. What does it actually say? You translate it. Help me out, please. Clean the bathtub. It's not cleaning the bathtub. It's just opening it. The bath is all ready. They've cleaned the room, and it's just simply open the bathtub. So if you can edit that thing, just to say, please open the tub. Open the tub first. That would be the one we do. The cleaning is already done. It's Ayana Santa. So, good morning, good morning. Sorry to ignore you there. There was a, there was a deep conversation going on. We're learning Vietnamese. I don't know. You're learning what? We're learning Vietnamese. Ah, Vietnamese. I can't in any way pronounce this, but the translation is, help me out. Please open the bathtub first. It's a bit of a long story, whatever. <laughs> okay. Come here, you, this, you, you can't get in. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't get in the way of my show. We have a massive, wonderful show and tell today. From, it's from Germany. Home. Shh, 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 don't give it away. No, okay. <laughs> How you doing? How was your weekend? Uh, I don't know, just busy with, uh, on, with packing and cleaning and stuff. Oh, the move. 
Yeah. It's November 1st, is it? November, the, f the first week of no November, but next weekend we'll be busy. Uh, it was like a friend's wedding and stuff, so oh, we don't sorry. have much time next The move, weekend. are you overlapping? So, or do you, do you have to do everything on Monday? You're leaving on the 31st and starting on the 1st, so it's got to be done one day, or are you overlapping? Three day overlap. But still, just a busy, okay. isn't it? Do you need like friends and stuff? My experience back in Canada, whenever somebody's moving, all their friends gather around and they haul stuff to the U-Haul truck and stuff like this. Mm, not really. We're going to use a moving company, so they okay. can carry most of the stuff. Okay. And if okay. there's any leftover, I think my dad will Good. come and uh, soka, soka, soka. Yeah. So you don't, you don't need all hands on deck, you no, know? No, no. Canadian not style really. is the, the people moving, they've got to get a bunch of empty boxes ready. They got to order pizza and beer and then they let their friends know and the friends come over and spend the day breaking their back. You know? <laughs> mm, beer and disc, after drinking beer, they're going to go back to their, their house driving car. Well, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Thank you for the invoice. Oh, the billing? Hey, hey. Her, her, her job has a time cycle, 1st, 11th, and 21st. And this time around, the 21st was on a weekend. So I had great difficulty. I had to, oh my God, I missed everything I wanted to do. I had to press her button on the 21st. <laughs> she prepped it all. Literally, I pressed one button on the 21st. Do you know what happened? Did I do something wrong? Uh, so the, the bill went to uh, 21st group, but uh, we normally send this uh, follow-up email to customers. Yeah, which I did. Through MailChimp. Yeah. And I guess that went to the 11th group. <laughs> it's not a disaster. They don't have any Wait, 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 wait. You gave me the new, you gave me the, the, the new, what's it called? Tag. Tag, yes. And I used the wrong tag. I think so. No, it's not a disaster. So, like, my job today, this morning, is to... Clean up after me. <laughs> not a clean up. I guess, I don't know, there were some emails from oh, customers. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I did, I did the billing first, and then I went to MailChimp, and I sent the reminder, says, on a, our system has sent you an email, but this is a follow-up in case you didn't get it. Seriously. And then within 30 minutes, like, 50 people paid the bill. I guess that bill came from, like... The maybe. normal system. Yeah. Not sure. Like I was, I was getting like some emails asking, like, "Hey, there's no outstanding invoice. I, I in fact, I already paid for ah, this month invoice." So I'm so assuming ka, that so the ka. Mailchimp went to. Okay, let's have a look and see what I did. Hi. I can't cover up my tracks. It's obviously there. We'll go to the website and see <laughs> what I did. Yeah, it's not a disaster, isn't it? There's nothing I need to be careful with. I just need to follow, send a follow-up email. Okay, okay. I, 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 I stand chastised. No, 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 no. no. But actually, you set it all up. All I did was press the button. What did I do then? When I imported the CSV into the email software, Hi. I selected the wrong tag then. Is that what happened? So the tag was for the 11th group yeah, because yeah, uh, that's yeah. from the yeah, you know, old yeah. data. Okay. So I guess we needed to change it to the okay. 21st group. Okay. But, uh, actually, it's like, because what happened? I started to type the tag and it came up. So what must have come up was the 11th. I was typing the tag for the 21st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, what's the gate? 2023 hyphen 10. And it was going to be hyphen 21. But I started typing 2023 hyphen 10. And it popped up. The last one. And I last, just accepted it. Last one is 21, 21st. No, the 11th. 21st. I created a tag. Okay, but what must have popped up was the 11th or something. And I clicked uh, it and accepted it. Anyway. Sorry for the confusion. Like, I'm really sorry for the confusion. Failed. She gives me a job to do and I fail. <laughs> maybe it means next time this comes up, she won't ask me. She'll ask somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I will do it myself. I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't want to, like, put lots of burden on you. It shouldn't be your work. The but, reason uh, I was doing it, it really is a one-button thing. You go to the manager page, pull this up, select what you want, click one button, and it's done. But, you know, she was off. It's weekends. We're trying to do a policy where you don't think about work stuff on the weekends. Of course. It's common sense. You know. And here I did. I screwed it up. So. No, 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 no. If there's a better way, like, I, I, I will do it myself. But uh. Well, no, I could. There actually it can be automated. There's things called cron jobs. Okay. And I can automate it. But then the question is setting it up properly. And if I screw it up in the setup, mm -hmm. then the automated thing starts doing the wrong thing, you know. So I, that's why I've left it as a manual job. Right. Okay, whatever. Well, Anyways, next week, yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Other than that, other than that, Mrs. Nothing. Lincoln, how is <laughs> <laughs> nothing really special happening recently, isn't it? 
Well, no, just getting months. ready for the move. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. fun. Yeah. Fun yeah. week, fun weeks. I don't know, but they're, they're moving into a house that looks really, really nice. They show me pictures. They showed all of us pictures. It seems light. It seems airy. Yeah, I don't know. Like I find it difficult to, I don't know, like set up everything for this house. Like internet, water, gas, electric. Normally, when you move to, let's say, a room in a, in a big apartment, it's mm. really easy because mm. there are lots of other people living. And then almost everything is already kind of set yeah, up. Yeah, it's just switch on for yeah. the gas company. Yeah, but This one, the gas company has to bring the actual gas yeah, cylinders. Yeah. And, and also yeah. they want to know yeah. the number that attached, uh, uh, assigned to this uh, yep. electric yep. something. Yep. 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 So yeah, it's, it's difficult. Even mm. internet mm. is like they mm. have to send a special request to the government or something. I don't know. What? That's not true. What do you mean? No, no. That it's maybe not a government, but this cable that goes, we need to... Set a new cable, set up a ah, new cable so no, that, go, that goes over someone's oh, Okay, house. that's a different story. That's a different so, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. have that. We had that problem here. In fact, oh, yeah? we couldn't get it. The nearest optical connection to mm -hmm. this building was in the back alley, but in order to run it to our building, it had to cross another building. So, 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 so. And there was so much trouble with that, we had to bail. Uh, we had to bail. Okay. So we had to wait, and it was months before we could get it. They made a new system. They dug a trench. That was, The plan B was open up the sidewalk here, dig a trench from some manhole all the way to us, and throw away all the Italian tiles, and we would have had to pay. So, so plan B didn't work. Okay. And we ended up, there, it turned out there was a way to pull the cable through and pull it up, but we had to try plan A, get rid of it, try plan B, get rid of it. We had to really, really push, 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 push. Yeah. It took months to get it going. Yeah, they say like three to six months and yeah, even crazy, this, crazy, they so. don't sound like they want to do it. So I was no, like, okay. No. If you don't when you get a real tight city and the houses are all stuck together, this idea of intruding in somebody else's space really becomes a big deal. Yeah, yeah. It really is a big deal. And the reason they didn't want to do that, we said, just throw the wire across the building. It's like that building is a two-story building, or one-story building, actually. Mm -hmm. And we're three stories. So our wire would have been up in the air three stories. And that's an old one-story building. But the problem comes, we put our wire there, optical fiber in this case. And then 10 years down the road, they want to reconstruct their building. Now we get a problem. They, they have, you know, the airspace is theirs. They want to put a four-story building in there. But our wire is in the way. And ah. then the problems, you know, it just goes around and around and around. Okay, so, okay. So, I so. couldn't understand, like, why is it so difficult no, to just, of course, you know... Of course, absolutely. Um, yeah, so. make a contract with the internet yeah. company. So I think if you're living in America, the idea of having your cable cross somebody else's house is really not going to happen. But here yeah. in Tokyo, it's a big deal. You know? mm. A big deal. So yeah, that's the difficulties mm. that I'm facing. Mm. Mm. So it's not really fun, but no, uh, so. once we move in, we'll be happy. About, about work and stuff this week, you've obviously got this billing stuff cycles happening right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're really overloaded or not. I know the next week or so, Watanabe-san is really, really, really busy. busy. Okay. And even over the weekend, I stacked stuff up on her desk. It's stacked like this high on her desk. More is coming today. Okay. Last night, I bought more than 250 prints last night, okay. some of which we'll see here on Show and Tell later. Mm -hmm. So I'm, it's because we're running out of so much stuff here. So, so she is okay. going to be, so if you do, you mentioned to me last week that you might have a bit of time, whatever. Yeah. Don't look at me. Look at, you know, okay. Okay. look at her because... Uh, all right. There may be no way she can share it with you, or there may be a way she can share it. It's up to you. I don't know. Yeah, so, okay. I'll ask her. I'll talk to her. Just keep in mind, she, this week she is really, okay. really, really stacked up. She's going to get to her, her desk this morning. What not son? She gets here at 9.30. She's going to go upstairs to her desk, and I will hear it from down here. She's going to go, oh, oh, my God, look at all this stuff. And we stacked it up on her desk. You can take a look before she gets here. There's a little box. Oh, it's okay. Too many things going on. Go, go, okay, go. Okay, get, okay, to okay, get to her. Get to her. Get to her. But take a look at that box. Small one. Yeah, it's it's about this big. Okay. Merry Christmas. So from you. No, 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 no. The box, the box, the box, the box, the box. Okay. Okay. Excuse me. You're saying three six months for internet. This is an unusual case. Most of the place now is wired. It's fibered. In most cases now, you know, you call the, the NTT people and you can have it tomorrow or the next day. In most cases, it's just when there's a quirk, that's when it gets messy and it doesn't happen. No, the, the Santa in a box. Actually, I should have kept that downstairs for show and tell. I've just got too much stuff for show and tell. It doesn't matter. 
we, had, we scored a box of prints. There was a, oh, just, Dave, do some work, do some work. We scored a box of prints on an auction the other day, and the person who put the auction up didn't have a clue what they were. And he had described them with some very generic keywords. And when I saw the auction, I looked at it and looked at that picture. And me and Watanabe-san looked at it and thought, hmm, this could be a real treasure, or this could be absolute junk, which we would just have to throw away as soon as we get it. Back all through the, the eras here, through, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago, lots of companies made reproductions of Japanese traditional woodbot prints. But lots of companies also made, of course, offset printing reproductions. This happens all the time. The Yomiuri newspaper, they give out UQA prints to their subscribers uh, every two weeks when people pay their, their newspaper fee. But they are offset prints. But sometimes now, the offset prints look really, really, really so well done, it's hard to tell from an auction picture what you're looking at. And the dudes who get these things and put them up on auction, they've gone to an encyclopedia. Utamaro is worth $50,000, and they think they've scored a real Utamaro print. And it's nothing. It's a newspaper photocopy. And this happens. It's, it, the, the, the auctions here are flooded with these things. And we have learned, okay, that particular shape, that particular style, that particular one, that's a printed book. We leave it alone. But one came up the other day. It was a set of prints. It was a set of 46 prints. And it really, really, really looked and smelled like offset printed set. It was in a little box. It was for tourists. It was cheap. The guy putting it up on auction just was asking a few bucks for it. But me and Watanabe-san looked at it. We thought, you know, I think, you know. And she says, it could be, but I don't know. And I said, it could be, but I don't know. And we looked at the price. It was uh, 8,000 yen, which is kind of too much to throw away. That's like 50 bucks. And we're not just going to throw that away, you know. So we really looked at it, looked at it, looked at it. At the end of the day, she said, I don't know. I don't think so. And I said, you know, I'm thinking, so whatever. A few, three, four, five, six days ago, I bid on it, and it arrived yesterday. And the reason I'm telling you this story, obviously, is it did work out. It was a set of 46 real woodblock prints, which we got for, uh, for 8,000 yen. But we, we miss a lot of them. I know the, the story goes the other way many times. The dealer auctions are different, of course. We inspect the stuff. We walk along the tables, look at the things, inspect them, turn them inside out, put our bid in the envelope. So the dealer auctions are, are sensible. We can see what we're doing. We can see what we're, uh, we can see the stuff. You know. The downside to the dealer auctions is a couple, uh, is of course competition. We're, we're fighting every other dealer in town. And also, almost all the things are bundles. In the dealer auctions, just to get the thing going and to make it make it possible to do it, you're not looking at one print, one print, one print, one print. It's bundled. And the guys, the dealers who are selling these things, they know how to make this happen. They've got stuff that nobody will ever want. They've got stuff that somebody really wants. They bundle them, of course. So in order to get the one you really want, you end up with a bunch of stuff. I do not want to put that into my shop. So there's no single easy smooth path for us to get these prints that we put in our shop, you know. We end up spending sometimes more than we would like to spend. Then there's so much competition these days. Nothing anymore is, is cheap and wonderful. So much competition. How's our time? We have one minute to show and tell.
Okay, we're not showing tell. Let's have a recap here of what we're doing. I'm, I'm sorry not to keep in better touch. People have just joined us, don't know what's going on. This is the drawing for the print we will be publishing in January. It is a Hawkside design. It's one of the sketches from the British Museum. It depicts three men from distant, far off lands. A man with a hole in his chest, a man who I uh, haven't finished drawing here, with a very, very, very long neck whose head will be in this area, and another man in the middle with very long ears. And I now, my back is against the wall with this, and I really have got to get going. I've got to get going. I knew there wouldn't be enough time just during Twitch streams to do this, but I thought I would be able to get farther away than I have done. It's been busy. It's been very, very, very busy. This last weekend was a bit down from what we had the previous weekends, but still, it was busy. Okay, I said we have a show and tell today from Germany. It's not from Germany, it's about Germany. Those of you who can read Japanese, you will see the contents of this is not hunger. It's hon. It's a book, but actually it's both. Let's have a look. Someone's saying, did the tax office, we haven't heard from them again. It's well, over the weekend, I wouldn't. It's now into the third week. It's Monday. Perhaps they will be contacting us today. I don't know. We had the two-day audit. That was two weeks ago. We had a short phone call with them last week. They asked for more information about a couple of points. Other than that, we are just sitting, waiting. One. General Zimmer is close. Not quite on, sir, but you're close. Layer two. Is there a book on how many layers? Have you guys been voting? Layer three. <laughs> I think, I think I can see the inside. I think, I think I can see it. I've got to be careful now because I think, in fact, knife is now going away. Because I think if I cut, yes, the real object is here. Four layers. Do we have a winner? Four layers. Okay, it is indeed a book. And uh, the general, was it the general? Was it the general who said fairy tale? You're right and you're wrong. It's not a fairy tale book, but it's from the same publisher. It is one book bound with string. Let's go to the front cover. It is a Hasegawa production, a crepe paper book. And we'll need translation. The, my German extends not very far. I can guess that's east. This must be from the east. I don't know what Gruss is. Dict or dictation, dicting, something. Poetry? Poetry from the East? Is that my guess? I don't know. This must be it. Yes, Japanese poetry. And the guy's name who's done the translation or writing, Mr. I don't know, Florence. So, poetry. Okay, we have poetry greetings from the East. What's the last little phrase here? Well, this will be third edition, the show. Third. 
Eins Wein 3 must be the third edition we have here. I can't read what, what does it say? There's writing on the boat sails as well that I can't see. Leipzig. It's a company name. Yes, so this must have been available in a bookstore or a company. C.F. Uh, Ameland or something in Leipzig. A well, 13th edition, I'm sorry. Not the, set, not the third edition. Thir 13,000. There's not an edition then. What's the consensus? 13,000? No idea. Let's explore. Not edition. Okay, okay, I'm on you. I'm on you. Sorry, I, I just jumped to, jumped to conclusions there. The 13,000. Is it an edition counting number? They did a thousand and then another thousand and this is the thirteenth thousand? Really? We have dates, I'm sure. Here we are inside. Okay, so for those of you who don't know what, what we're looking at, we have seen books like this before. All the pictures you're about to see, every illustration you're about to see is done with Japanese woodblock printmaking. Pieces of wood, Again, beginners, beginners, beginners here. Pieces of wood carved with patterns and then rubbed with ink. Every picture, every illustration you see here is done that way. The text for this book is not. The text is done with normal metal type in a printing press. And you are not looking at fabric, you are looking at Japanese paper. This is Japanese washi, washi paper. And you can see the crisscross pattern on it. After the woodblock print was made, after the metal type had been embossed onto it to give the body of the text, the paper was then what they call crept. It was stacked up in groups, rolled up, and compressed from each end. Then opened out, reshuffled, rolled up in a different direction, compressed from each end. So compressed, 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 compressed in different directions, and a large sheet of paper got turned into a much smaller sheet, sometimes about half the size. This print you see here would have been perhaps uh, maybe the double the volume, about two-thirds of the dimensions, and it would have been craped, 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 and it turns it into something that looks almost like wonderful soft fabric. They're stunning, astonishing objects. They're called crepe paper books. And they were published by a company called Hasegawa. And we're talking about, they started doing this in the late 1800s, and they ran right through until, oh, the 1930s or so doing this. There will be a date on this one somewhere. I can see this must be all rights reserved. Where is our date? Let me poke around for a minute here. I don't see a date there. I don't see a date here. So let's me flip to the very back page for a second to see if I can find a date. Here we are. This is so delicate, this stuff. It's so delicate. It's all creped up. It's hard to read here. It's Meiji 27, the 8th month, the 20th day. So Meiji 27 would be when this particular volume was, was made. And I don't know, there must be editions. No, that just, it doesn't say anything about 1st edition, 2nd edition, 3rd edition. It doesn't say anything about that. Meiji 27 is what year? 1894. Okay, now this thing's massive. So what do we do? Let's just look through a bit of it. Good morning, Eroko san. How's your German? Do you speak German? No, I, no, I didn't. So oh, uh, can you put that back? You unplugged oh. my light here. I don't... The lady tripped over the cable. No, it's on. No, it's not on. You've killed it somehow. Wheel it. Okay. Can well, I unplug this? And then yeah, whatever. You've done. Yeah, yeah. It oh, came back. Okay. okay. Hi. I'm sorry.
I, I cannot, I'm sorry, I cannot read this. Excuse me, I really don't know. My only knowledge about German ended with the word East. So I'm sorry, if somebody can uh, help us with this. Obviously the foreword. And again, everything you see is a beautiful woodblock print made at larger scale and then crepped down. Oops. So the dedication page was in memory of somebody, was it? In memory, I see, in memory of George. Is that a name, somebody's name? I don't know. We will be putting a bunch of this online on the collection, but it's going to be a while, and there's no way I'm going to be able to do the whole thing, obviously. Keep me this Good morning, good morning. Good morning. you're from Europe, right? You're yes. from the Netherlands. How's your German? Um, How's your reading German? Reading is good. Reading is good. Did you hear what she said? <laughs> step over. Come and step over here, okay. madame. I hope I won't regret what I just said. Okay. Please give me a quick translation of this 500-page book, all in German. Okay, five minutes and done. <laughs> so, this must be contents to show. It's a book yeah. of, of poetry. I think it seems to be Japanese poetry translated into German. I don't know. We'll have a look. And it's woodblock prints. It's a crepe paper book, and every page is gloriously made as a woodblock print, and the text is all in German. Look at this. It's a woodblock print you're looking at. It was made on flat paper and then craped down. And the text is all German poetry. And it may be Japanese poetry translated. Or it may be some original German poetry. I don't know. It looks like yeah, po poetry. Yeah, yeah, it's like a story. Yeah. yeah. And if it's anything like English poetry, this is from... Uh, 1890 or something. What, what was the date on this song, gang? What was the date? I didn't get a date. Meiji 27, or 1894. And if it's anything like English poetry, Victorian era poetry in 1894, it would be very, very long-winded and, uh, you know, it would be of a certain style. And maybe the Germans had a very a similar approach. I don't know. So I can't, uh, I can't do anything with the content at the moment, but... Uh, my God, look at this. Page after page after page. Uh, I got this actually, this did not come through a dealer auction. This came through open Yahoo auctions. I got this last week on Yahoo and I had to pay 13,000 yen for it. What's 13,000 yen in, in Deutschmarks? <laughs> or euros? I don't know. It's about 90, 90, about $100, close to $100. So this cost me about US $100. This is not going in our flea market. We will not be selling it. This is for our collection. And I feel a bit sad for you because the, the fun with these, the pleasure with these is just touching them and feeling them and turning the pages. So I'll give it to you in a minute, Beatrice, and if we're finished. Have you, had, have you touched one of these crepe paper books before? They're just, feel. it's just like the softest, you know. So. And the, the cover here, which has been touched more, if we jump through to the middle here, touch a page like this in the middle, which hasn't been opened so much, you can feel it. It's got a bit more, uh, uh, it's tighter and more consistent, yeah. you know. It hasn't been opened so much, but the one on the front, because it's open and exposed, it's like the softest, softest, it's way softer than tissue paper, and it's way, way stronger. Now, I, I'm not gonna fight with this, but if I tried to, you know, tear it, it wouldn't, wouldn't tear easily. One of the ideas of these crepe paper books is they made a bunch of them for kids and they could give them to kids because kids would play. It's like, like fabric books for kids today, except these aren't fabric, it's paper. It actually says, by the way, on the front, it says that it's like poetry from mm. the East. So from the East, so we, yeah. we got that far. So just before you came, we were getting that far. But poetry from the East, whether it's translations of Japanese poetry or whether it's uh, uh, original uh, uh, German yeah. poetry, I don't know, I'm sorry. Maybe the chat has already made their decision on this. Uh, so. Someone's saying, does it smell musty? 
It doesn't at all. It smells, it's got the smell of a crepe paper book. I mean, I've got a bunch of these books already. And it smells like a hundred plus year old woodbot print, but it's not dirty or musty or, or, or smelly in any way. And page after page, the amount of work involved. Look, I, let me just do this flip thing. Look at this. Every page, full color, woodblock print. And remember, the left and right are on different woodblocks. This whole thing has been planned from the beginning. You know how it works. This, this page and this page are on one woodblock. This page and this page are on a different woodblock. So they can't make the pictures on one woodblock. Printer A is doing this, printer B is doing this, but they've got to make sure they get the color matched up. It just goes on and on and on. Human beings did this. A bunch of men sitting in a workshop. Look at it, look at it. Boo, 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 do, 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 do. It's insane. Absolutely insane. How many did they make? I haven't a clue. We had that hint at the beginning. It says the 13th thousand. So maybe all that effort to carve all those blocks did pay off if they printed really 13,000 copies of it. I don't know. I don't know if that... I don't think that's what it means because it wouldn't be on the front cover. If it's an edition, we're up to our 13,000. It would be at the back on the, you know, on the colophon page. You wouldn't carve it and print it on your front cover because that would have to change with every printing. So I don't think that's relevant to the edition. 13,000. I don't know, but I don't think it could be the edition. It doesn't make any sense to be carved and printed on the front cover. I'll bring you more as I learn more. Maybe somebody's already explained that in the chat, but I've missed it. I'm sorry. There is an English, the English version, as in, here we are, the people have got impressions. The book saw 15 printings, 1914. So it is. Somebody, the data here is coming up that this actually was changed each time. So if somebody's done ideki, they've cut the block out, put a piece in the block, changed the carving, cut the block out, put the piece in the block. If that's what's happened, that's the data I'm reading here. Somebody says 15th is the highest number. Is it really a thousand? If there was, there'd be one of these in every used bookstore around the corner in Leipzig. Anyway, there we are. There we have it. It goes into our collection. I don't think we'll be putting it on the net page by page anytime soon now. We already have a whole bunch of these books waiting in line. But there we are, just so it's introduced. And as I said, we spent, yeah, it's funny, I spent 13,000 yen to buy this thing, which is about $100 US, I guess. Yes, there is lots of info on these out there. Somebody's linking to Baxley stamps. Yes, these books are well known, well researched. There's lots of info out there about them. I should have maybe looked that up before the stream started. Someone's saying you bought some Jikli prints on my website, how long does it take to ship? No, you didn't. You bought some Jikli prints on ukiyoeheroes.com, which is not me. I don't have any idea. We don't do Jikli prints. I'm sorry. You're, you're, the website you're referring to is not me. That's Jed Henry, ukiyoeheroes.com. Okay, anyway, I got to get out of here. Back to my pasting and tracing. Thanks very much. Good fun. I'm sorry you can't see the whole thing. What can I say? What can I do? Just introduce the concept. There you have it. Hasegawa Chidi Membon Crepe Paper Books. Most of them were English. Some were in French. Some were German. There was a scattering. Very few in Spanish and Russian and in Dutch. But mostly they were English and then German and French were the next two major languages. And they were made to order by Hasegawa for publishers overseas. These would all have been made, they wouldn't have been sold in Japan, they would have been made in bulk, shipped in boxes, and sent over to Leipzig for sale from there. Okay, let's get out of here. Let me bring up the outside camera. As usual, or as reasonably usual, it's been a real uh, mishmash of conversation and work here today. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in three more days on Thursday. It looks dark, but it's not. It's going to be a really, really nice day.
it's a blue, blue sky you're seeing up there, not a gray sky. You're seeing a blue sky up on top of Don Quixote. And the sign on the ninja place, the sign up on the second floor says Ninja Yashiki, the house of ninja. And the sign in front of us on the bottom floor says Shuriken Taiken. Shuriken is the throwing stars. And you can have your own experience of throwing stars there at the ninja place. Okay, we're out of here. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.